journalist, once guardians of free speech, now propagandists for the New World Order. Journalists. Decades ago, and I'm talking over 30 years ago because it's, it's gone downhill for that long, their credo used to be uncovering corruption and protecting free speech. And now all they do is parrot talking points for the new world order and try and destroy citizen journalists who are the only ones doing real investigations and investigating the truth. I'm not going to do a long video on this because Polly's tweeted about it and Derek Rance has done a video on it. I'm just using it as an example. Amazing Polly recently did a video, an excellent video, everyone should watch it, on the Michael Cooper affair, where this Muslim guy went into Parliament and basically broad generalisingly attacked conservatism and attacked the so-called alt-right, which doesn't even exist, saying that they're responsible for all the attacks on Muslims and blaming conservatism solely responsible, which was disgusting because most of the bloody terrorists out there and most of the people that do the unprovoked attacking and slander and everything are the leftists, but that's beside the point. Michael Cooper gets up and all he does is say that this person should be ashamed for attacking solely one ideology and one side of politics, blaming that side of politics for all the attacks on Muslims. Pretty milquetoast and pretty monotone, if you ask me. But this is how bad not only Canadian Parliament, but all Western Parliaments have forgotten. Both sides of politics, both the Conservatives and the Liberals, moan and groan in Parliament. The Conservatives and the Conservative leader, Andrew Shear had hung Michael Cooper out to dry, and even worse than that, they resorted to Nazi-style communist tactics in expunging Michael Cooper's comments from the record. And decades ago, you would have had journalists saying that this was a disgusting violation of free speech and the record should be returned and we don't know what the world's turned into. Nowadays, you've got so-called New World Order journalists, or I don't call them journalists anymore, I just call them copywriters, because all they do is copy and paste talking points given to them by the likes of George Soros and so forth, excoriating Michael Cooper for such comments. And what comments? When I watched that video, I thought, all the hoo-ha over this, all he's saying is that you should be ashamed for blaming one side of politics for such attacks, which is correct. And anyone who does that, I don't even blame the leftists for everything, a broad generalising comment, even though most of the time it's their fault. I don't do that. That's all he said. There's a case in Australia that everyone needs to follow, right? This Israel for Lau case, which is a... For the people who don't know who Israel for Lau is, he's a rugby star who was Australia's biggest rugby star who quoted the Bible on, I believe... I can't remember whether it was Twitter or Instagram, but he quoted a passage out of the Bible. Now, I can't recite the passage word for word, but it was basically the passage that states, you know, all adulterers and all homosexuals are damned to hell, basically. Now, I believe in God. I'm a Christian, but the Bible is written by men, and I believe that I personally hope, because I have friends who are homosexuals, but, you know, they don't go to hell, and I believe personally adulterers can be forgiven anyway that's the passage in the bible he's quoted a direct passage out of the highest selling book in the world and as a result of that Qantas put pressure on rugby australia now the ceo of Qantas, alan joyce is a lefty virtue signaling gay guy 
who put pressure on Rugby Australia as their major sponsor and basically said, if you don't sack Israel Folau, we're going to pull our sponsorship. And as a result, they sacked him. Now, this is against free speech. This is against religious freedom. And now he's currently taken Rugby Australia to the Fair Work Commission and hopefully he wins his case. But the point about that is you've got journalists on TV and in the newspapers unbelievably arguing whether or not Israel Folau should have been sacked for quoting a passage out of the Bible. Unbelievable. Now, let me ask you this question. If the player was a Muslim and he quoted a passage out of the Quran saying that, for example, all infidels need to die or be executed or whatever, do you think he would have been sacked? Be interesting, wouldn't it? Something tells me I don't think so. This is a very important case for free speech and religious freedom at the moment. It's one of the most important cases in the world because our religious liberty are at stake and Israel for ours reputation and livelihood are at stake. So everyone should look up that case. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.